Welcome to our worship service this morning. We will be celebrating the Eve of All Saints with, as well as with communion. So if the point in the service where communion shows up and you have your bread and juice or liquid t together, then you can join us at this time. The past is full of memories. The future is full of possibility. The past calls to the future for the word of forgiveness. The future sings to the past of the goodness of God. And now is the time for memories and hope, for accepting, restoring, and understanding. Come, let us worship the God of the past, present, and future. Let us pray. We come from our houses, vineyards, orchards, fields, apartments, and our homes. We come and celebrate the ministry of Christ's church in this place. We come, gracious God, following the footsteps of Jesus, just as our forebears did. We remember the people of all genders and all ages who have gathered in this sanctuary, sat in these pews, and marveled at the beauty and generosity that surrounds us. We gather in the company of the saints. We honor the faith that has been handed down through the decades. For this faith and for those who shared it, praise be to you, O God. Amen. And our prayer of renewal. For the sacrifices of the saints of the past and for the joy we have shared with the saints of the present, we give you praise and thanks, O God. May we remember the essence of your promise a promise of wholeness, health, and holiness. As we cleanse ourselves in the presence of your Spirit, so may we be energized to serve others into the future. Be with us in worship and in service, in justice and in celebration, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In life, in death, in life beyond death, you are with us, O God. God of all saints, we thank you for the blessing of wisdom the souls of the saints have given, and we thank you for the cherished memories we hold dear. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, reading from the 11th chapter. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him, and let him go. The Gospel of Christ. Eternal God, open our minds to hear your word, our hearts to love your word, and our lives to be obedient to your word through the power of your spirit and the name of Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We encounter this statement spoken by Jesus most frequently when we are at a funeral. 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus is telling Martha, the sister of Lazarus, this when he arrives at her house upon the death of her brother. But what is missing from the statement is the question Jesus asks immediately. Then he asks Martha, do you believe this? When we look around us, we see God's great creation. Scientists who explore the universe had found numerous other solar systems, galaxies and new planets well beyond our system. But yet none have been found that can support life or that to seem to support life other than our own. So I often wonder then, what is the purpose of all this? Why does this planet exist if there is no greater purpose than to have us live out our lives and then simply die? Cultures since the beginning of time have maintained that there is existence beyond this life. The most primitive societies to the most sophisticated have rituals that are celebrated at the time of death. What happens to us after we complete our span of time on earth has been a question that man has tried to answer from the beginning. Some believe that there is no life after death, and for them I feel sorry. Scripture is full of speculations about what happens to us. The writer of the Hebrews claimed that Old Testament saints hoped for life beyond the grave. Several Old Testament incidents support this conclusion. God commanded Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. But Abraham believed that somehow Isaac would return with him from Mount Moriah, and he told this to his servants. The writer of Hebrew stated that Abraham believed God could raise the dead. And if you imagine that, just a tiny bit, then figuratively speaking, Abraham did receive Isaac back from death. David expressed his hope of resurrection in Psalm number 16. Peter used David's words to explain Christ's resurrection. Isaiah brought hope to believing his lights when he declared that the dead will live and their bodies rise. Many who lived in New Testament times believed in the resurrection on the basis of the Old Testament. All New Testament teaching about a literal bodily resurrection of the dead is based on the resurrection of Christ. Jesus spoke of his resurrection early on in his ministry but no one understood what he meant until after the event occurred. At least three times Jesus made major predictions of his death and resurrection. Jesus also occasionally demonstrated his power by raising individuals from the dead. On a few occasions Jesus spoke about resurrection. In John he said everyone will be resurrected, those who had done good exhibiting their faith in Christ and those who had done evil, revealing their unbelief. After Lazarus died, Jesus told Martha that he himself was the resurrection and the life, and that those who believe in him will never die. Jesus' resurrection was a major theme in the preaching of the apostles in the book of Acts. Because Christ had risen, the Holy Spirit was poured out on believers. Because of the resurrection, Peter and others faced severe opposition with amazing courage. Saul came to faith because he saw the risen Christ. The resurrection of Jesus was the central element of the gospel message that went to the Gentiles. One of Paul's most significant statements about the resurrection appears in 1 Corinthians. He says there that the resurrection of Christ assures all who believe in him that they will be raised from the dead. Many times when talking to a family at the time of a death, I note the presence of the spirit of the person who has passed. That spirit is an integral part within the lives of those of us who are left behind. We know their stories, we know their habits, we know how they would respond to any situation. 
we can call upon the spirit of our family member whenever we are, wherever we are. While that they lived, it is necessary for us to go to where they are or to call them on the phone or today to text. Now that they are not with us, we can call upon them wherever we are. Our lives are shared with those we love. We know the things that they liked. We know the thoughts that they have. We do not need to wonder how they would think about something we might need to ask them. The key to this is that their spirit is with us. The same is true about Jesus. We have been in contact with Jesus since our very young days. We have heard the stories. We know what Jesus would do at many situations. And we know this because of the spirit, the spirit that lives within us, each and every one of us. Jesus is here with us. He is here with us to pick us up when we are experiencing low times in our lives. When we are dead to those things that should really matter in our daily living, we should know that we can always turn to Jesus. And we will be there to lift us. He will be there to lift us, to raise us up, to give us the strength to look at what bothers us in the face and to tackle the difficulty and to win over it. Jesus can breathe new life into our being. On the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican are scenes from the Bible painted by Michelangelo. One of the most powerful among those images is the scene depicting the creation of Adam. You have the picture of the body of Adam, arm extended, limp and lifeless. Alongside is the picture of a mighty God, his arm and his finger reaching for Adam, ready to give him life. The space between Adam's finger and the finger of God is but a few centimeters. But within those few short centimeters is the suggestion that a spark will pass from God to Adam, giving him life. Michelangelo did not include that spark in his painting, but it is there in all its glory, in all its power. Our lives are no farther apart from God or Jesus than those few centimeters either. And God is constantly and forever reaching out to us to pass the spark of life into our being. All we have to do is accept that mighty gift, life with God. God has never let us down. He has guided us through most of our life with love and compassion. Not once was he forced what, has he forced what he believes upon us. He has always let us decide what we should do or should not do. And whatever our decision has been, the right one or the wrong one, he has always stuck by us. He will always bring us back to life, back to the light that is Jesus. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim
God is with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right that we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God, our God. It is right to give thanks and praise to God. It is truly the right thing to do, that we thank you and praise you, most God, most holy, creator of all. For we are not alone. We live in your world. We live in your world, we live in your creation, in all of its wonder and all of its life. We believe in you who has created and is creating. In your love with your word, by your spirit, you brought all things into being. In your love with your word, by your spirit, you bring all things into being. With that creation you live entangled and entwined with all people, all places, and all things. Alleluia. We believe in you who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. On the night that he was taken to what would be his death on a cross, Jesus gathered with his disciples for a meal of remembrance, a meal of hope, and a meal of challenge. As the disciples gathered, he served them, washing their feet. As the disciples ate, he taught them, helping them to understand what would come. As the disciples raged and disbelieved, he loved them, even knowing he would be betrayed, even knowing he would be abandoned. And his judgment was to love them, every single one, no matter what. That is our hope. He took bread, broke it, and gave thanks to you, God, of all creation. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, 
This is my body given for you. Each time you eat bread, remember me. In life, in death, in life beyond death, he took wine, poured it, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is all of, drink this, all of you. This is my promise in my life's blood that sins are forgiven. Each time you drink, remember me. God is with us. We are not alone. Holy God, send your spirit upon this bread and this liquid and all who are gathered that they and we might truly be the body and blood of Jesus Christ alive in your creation. Thanks be to God. You, God, who are our Father, who art in heaven. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for us. Let us pray. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, to the life we have received, Thank you, God. Help us to be your church in the days, weeks, and years to come, filled and refreshed by your constant love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grant us, God, the grace of giving, with the spirit large and free, that ourselves and all our living we may offer faithfully. Great calling God, we dis dedicate these offerings and our lives to you and your way, as have the saints of the past. Multiply them as you will. Amen. Let us pray. Let us remember those in our world who suffer from torture, and who are victims of others who disregard the dignity of God's people and of God's creation. Let us pray for those who are outcast, hungry, homeless, poor, and those who are unemployed. Let us pray for the hope of justice in our world and in our lives. Let us pray for our planet Earth. We offer our prayers trusting in God's wisdom and compassion, in the knowledge that God hears the prayers of the faithful in whose arms we find comfort and understanding. Amen. We hear Jesus' call to care. In this time of worship, may we listen for and be inspired by Jesus' mandate to love boldly, care compassionately, and be just the seekers. In the name of the radical Christ, we pray. Amen. We celebrate with those having birthdays, and this week we have the birthday of Ginger Trenum. We celebrate with those who are having anniversaries, noting this week Ron and Lucy Wells, whose anniversary we missed last Sunday. Gracious God be with us as we celebrate our own special achievements, and especially what we may have expected or not expected that um, gave us an achievement this past week. Holy Spirit, be present as we enjoy a long life, as we renew vows made, and as we grow and experience your grace. Amen. We pray for all who are unwell at home, in hospital or nursing homes. We ask that you comfort them, Almighty God, in all this time of their discomfort. We pray for those who are now at rest, remembering Arthur David Wharton of Pugwash and Robert Marlowe Tuttle of Pugwash Junction. May light perpetual shine upon them, mighty God. Amen. You have taken us as we are, O God, 
You have summoned out what we shall be. You have set your seal upon our hearts. Living Christ, do we yet know how completely our lives will continue to change because of our baptism? Perhaps, but we do know that you are with us each step of the way, our companion and our guide, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth. For the love of God is ours to share, the peace of Christ is ours to extend, and the power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. Amen. Hugs, and we'll talk again soon.